Everything we know about celestial objects, stars in particular, comes from just analyzing and breaking down its starlight. There is no way for us to travel to these stars. We cannot take samples of them. We cannot examine them up close. All we can ever do is take images of them or study their spectra to characterize their qualities. And all again, all that's done by just understanding and really analyzing the light coming from these stars. So in this miniature series, we're going to discuss just a few of the properties that we can learn about stars by analyzing their sunlight, and we'll begin with brightness. Now, when you think about brightness, you can easily conjure up an image like this one in your mind. Uh, we have some street lights here. We know that they all have the same true brightness. In other words, they all are shining at the same wattage, and therefore, you could take a look at this and make a very informed guess as to which street lamps are closer to us and which street lamps are farther. But when it comes to understanding the stars, we cannot make that same assumption because each star has its own luminosity. So remember that luminosity is the surface area of the star multiplied by the amount of energy leaving a single unit area every second. This is a quantity known as the flux. So a luminosity of the star is typically going to be dependent on the radius of the star and its temperature. So we often compare the radii of stars to our own sun. So we would say that star's radius are measured in solar radii, and their temperatures are measured in Kelvin. And the numbers 4 and pi are just constants, as is the Greek letter sigma, the Stefan Boltzmann constant. So it all comes down to understanding a star's radius and temperature. So the hotter or larger the star, the more luminous it's going to be. Now, we compare everything to the sun, so we'll define the radius as one solar radius of the sun. And temperature is often just measured in Kelvin. So the surface temperature of the sun is about 5,800 Kelvin. So we would say that its total luminosity is one solar luminosity. But compare that to Sirius. That has a luminosity of over 25 times the sun's luminosity. But what really drives the luminosity of Sirius is its temperature. At almost 10,000 Kelvin, it is nearly twice the temperature of the sun. So let's take a look at two well-known stars in the constellation of Orion, Betelgeuse and Rigel. They both very approximately have the same luminosity. I'm not saying that their luminosities are identical, but they both have the same power of 10 or order of magnitude when it comes to luminosity, about 100,000 solar luminosities. However, the temperatures between the two stars are dramatically different. In fact, you could just take a look at Betelgeuse and Rigel and you could see right away that Rigel is decidedly blue in color. Therefore, it's got to be hotter than Betelgeuse. So how is it that Betelgeuse could have a luminosity that comes anywhere close to Rigel's despite having a lower temperature? And the answer is that Betelgeuse is much, much larger than Rigel. Both stars are much larger than our sun, but Betelgeuse is three orders of magnitude greater than the sun versus Rigel, which is just two orders of magnitude. So that jump in radius really is what helps Betelgeuse to rival Rigel in terms of luminosity. Now let's think about the apparent brightness of stars. Well, again, returning to our analogy, we know that all of the lamps in this image all have roughly the same luminosity, but the brightness obeys an inverse square law. That means the greater the distance, the lower the brightness, but it goes as the distance squared. So if you are at twice the original distance, now the brightness is one-fourth its original brightness. At three times the distance, it's at one-ninth the original brightness, and so on. So in this example, we have two stars, both have the same luminosity, but star A is twice the distance of star B. Therefore, the brightness of A is going to be about one quarter the brightness of B. But if we could increase the luminosity of star A by a factor of four, then that factor of four increase in luminosity cancels out the factor of four decrease in brightness, and so now the two stars appear equally as bright. The first astronomer to characterize the brightness of stars was Hipparchus of Nicaea. And what he did was define a magnitude system based upon the brightness of stars as he perceived them. He would watch the sky as the sun was setting, 
and the first stars that would come out, he assigned them as magnitude 1, followed by the second stars that he would notice would be magnitude 2, and 3 for the third brightest stars that he'd notice, 4, and all the way down until magnitude 6, where magnitude 6 are the faintest stars that the human eye can detect, and this magnitude system still exists to this day. But you could even tell that some of the magnitude 1 stars have slightly different brightnesses, and there was a, a need for a more mathematical descriptive way of defining magnitudes. Well, it turns out there is a factor of 100 in brightness between a magnitude 1 star and a magnitude 6 star. So here we have two stars circled. We have Antares at about magnitude 1 and V2368 Ophiuchus at magnitude 6. So right at the limit of human detection. In fact, you may not even be able to see it on your screen. It's so faint. So these two stars differ by about a factor of 100. So to fit that into the magnitude scale, each step in magnitude represents a two and a half factor in brightness difference. In other words, a magnitude two star is two and a half times fainter than a magnitude one star, and a magnitude three star is two and a half times fainter than a magnitude two star, and so on. So we can express this using our logarithm, which is the difference between any two magnitudes is equal to 2.5, the logarithm of the ratio of the two brightnesses. Now that might seem a little bit weird to get your head around, but just remember, the logarithm is the exponent. In other words, we're asking the question, hey, what do I have to take the number 10 and raise it to in order to get the numbers represented by the brightness ratios? So we can just solve for the relative brightnesses by just simply raising 2.5 to the power defined as the difference in magnitudes. But even if this seems a little bit difficult to keep in your brain, the most important thing to understand is that when it comes to magnitude, the lower the value, the brighter the star is going to be. Here's a few examples. Betelgeuse is at a magnitude of plus 0.45, Bellatrix at plus 1.60, uh, this little guy over here, HIP 3903, is plus 4.9, so that's pretty close to the limit of human detectability. Rigel is a little bit brighter than Betelgeuse at plus 0.15, and then Sirius has a negative value at negative 1.45. So Sirius is clearly the brightest star in this image. It looks that way on the sky too, but even if we didn't have a way of seeing Sirius, we could look at a table and quickly identify which of these stars is the brightest. 